Hi, I'm going to show you how to know the Holy Spirit personally so that you can navigate life successfully. You know, the life is filled with so many challenges. We all need the Holy Spirit to be able to navigate life successfully. Sit back and relax. We're going to show this video from one face to another and we're going to know how to go through this life that we are with the help of the Holy Spirit successfully. And we're starting right now. Hi, lovelies. Welcome back to this channel. This is Gitche Clef Flavor. We fish out all the juicy things that God has done in our lives. And we give glory to God. In this channel, we know things are happening, but we don't really pay attention to the negative things that are happening in the world. We focus our attention on the good part of things that God is doing in our life. And we see that good thing everywhere. We see it and we bring it out. Today, we're talking, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit was personally. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, looking at the various, this, you know, various points that I'm going to list up. Firstly, we're going to know the two type of knowledge. I know there are several knowledge periods important to us. We're going to talk about that in this video. Then also, we're going to know the name of the Holy Spirit. Is it called Holy Spirit? We're going to know the name of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yes. Then we're going to move further and look at the problems that surround this. Why are we not really seeing the advantage of the Holy Spirit in our lives today, in your life today, in my own life today? And I think there's a problem. We're going to look at the problem also today in this video. Then we're going to move from that to talk about how to build our lives, how to build our lives, how to build your life, how to build my own life too. Then we're going to move further from there to talk about why, what does it mean to be anointed? Yes, what does it mean to be anointed? We all know. Is it this um, um, anointing oil that we talk, carry about? What does it mean to be anointed? We're going to talk about it here. Then also, you know, this video is packed. Yes, it's packed. Now we're going to move further and talk about what is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Does this Holy Spirit have a voice? Then we're going to talk about speaking in tongues. What is it? The speaking in tongues that we hear people doing. Some people don't believe in speaking in tongues. Some people believe in speaking in tongues. What is the speaking in tongues all about? We're going to talk about speaking in tongues. Then we're going to wrap this video up with the benefits of speaking in tongues. Is it beneficial? Is it beneficial to me to speak in tongues? Is it beneficial for you to speak in tongues? So sit back, relax. Let's get started. If you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, go and get it. He says all of us are, in, we are on a journey and there are several routes to this journey. So now, how are we going to navigate to the uh, Navigate all this route. How? How? And this is where the Holy Spirit comes into place. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides our step to the right route. He's the one that makes us know which one is specific to me, which one is specific to you. He opens our understanding. The Holy Spirit opens our understanding and teach us the right step to take. 
in a crossroad who is there to tell you that no now that you are here when is to take is the holy spirit see how important the holy spirit is and that's why you see people you know just living any kind of life you know falling into you know oh sorry becoming victims of what they are not supposed to be victim of The Holy Spirit show you how to get your inheritance. Isn't that beautiful? The Holy Spirit shows you how to get your inheritance. Yes. He literally bring your inheritance into you, into your hands. You know, he brings your inheritance into your hands and he shows you your destiny. Now, now that we know you know the two kinds of knowledge who is the holy spirit i want to talk about this the holy spirit is not cloud <laughs> yes many people think that you know when a cloud just shows up like this that's mean yes that's the holy spirit but the holy spirit is not cloud we're talking about who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is not cloud the holy spirit is not what Smoke, of course, it's not smoke. It's, it's not smoke, it's more than that. And it's not dove. Many people, you know, when they see dove flying, they'll not say, yes, the Holy Spirit has come. No. And of course, the Holy Spirit is not light. It's not lightning. And yes, you know, some people say that, I hear that thing talking to me. The Holy Spirit is not thing. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Yes, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. Then who is this Holy Spirit? Who? Who is this Holy Spirit? He is the third person in the Godhead. Hello? Hello? The Holy Spirit is the third person. That means the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit looks like you. The Holy Spirit looks like me. He's a person in what? He's a person. He's a third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is a third person in. He's a third person of the Godhead. Yeah. You know, many people mistake the Holy Spirit because it's the last person to be revealed to us. People think that, you know, it's not really important, but he's so very important to us. And you know what? He's even the first person that was revealed to us in the Bible. Yes, he's the first person that was revealed to us in the Bible. He is the last of the Trinity to be known by us. Yes. He is the last of the Trinity to be known by us. He is the one Jesus Christ said he will pray the Father to come be with us till the end forever. Yes, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know what? Look exactly like Jesus. Have you ever seen Jesus? <laughs> yes. If you know how Jesus looks like, then you know how the Holy Spirit looks like too. And the good part of it is that the Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The Holy Spirit is a power of God and does not receive power from God. Yes, I was just trying to make, I want to emphasize this. The Holy Spirit is a power of God. It's so difficult to live a life of a real Christian in this present world without the Holy Spirit. Especially now that you know evil has become so, you know, is now evil is, is how like putting it's so very kind of common to kill you so you can imagine a 17 years old child killing another person for a ritual 
Even it's so very very easy as in carry everywhere now and without any room as in people are no more remorseful about sin anymore. So we as Christians is the Holy Spirit that help us to live a victorious life here on earth. Then Holy Spirit, yes, you can check that out too. So I said you can receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost by what? Laying of hands and what? By accent. Now let's go ahead and talk about advantages of having the Holy Ghost in you. What are the advantages of having the Holy Ghost in you? The Holy Spirit leads you through the wilderness of life. Yes. The Holy Spirit leads you through the wilderness of life. You are know, you and I know that if you really want to kind of navigate your life in this in your ways in this life that we're living, you need a guide. And the Holy Spirit is your guide. He helps you to navigate your life. The Holy Spirit directs our steps. He directs our steps. That's the that's one of the uh, reason why we need to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yes, what He directs our steps. The Holy Spirit directs direct ourselves. Then the Holy Spirit makes you to know exactly what to do. Yes. We're talking about the ministry or the ministration of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So the Holy Spirit came to be what our comforter. The Holy Spirit came to be our comforter. And we can see him comforting us in several ways. Now, the Amplified Version of the Bible simplified this comforting in a very unique way for us to understand more. Now, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Yes, he advises us as our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to navigate through you know, the route, through the routes of life. The Holy Spirit is an intersexual. Yes, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. You can see that in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Yes, 26. Romans 8, 26. You understand. The Holy Spirit is our intersexual. Hallelujah. That means when you're going through something, the Holy Spirit can prompt a believer somewhere to pray for you. He can intercede for you through the help of a believer somewhere. So he is our intercessor. Then the Holy Spirit also is our advocate. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our advocate. You don't need to kind of, when people are against you, talking, you know, over whatever they want to talk about you. You don't need to go there and be fasting. Why are you saying this? Why are you saying this about me? I know that. What you need to do is to engage the service of the Holy Spirit. He is your defense. He is my defense. He is my advocate. He will defend you. He will. He will. So all what you need is to kind of, you know, recognize the place of the Holy Spirit in your life. And leave the rest. Anybody that is fighting you, they cannot just fight you and succeed, you know, completely. The Holy Spirit will be there to advocate for you. He will fight your own battle for you because he's your defense. Then the Holy Spirit is your strengthener. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the ministration of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is our strengthener when you're weak. You need to be strong because you know the Holy Spirit walks through you. So you just have to be strong and he is the one to strengthen you to go through. Praise the Lord. Then he is a standby. I so love this. The Holy Spirit acts as a standby generator. When everybody has failed you, you know, you've tried everything and it's not working. The Holy Spirit is there to help you pick it up again. Pick up from where you start. Please read Romans chapter 8 verse 11. You're going to kind of find more detail of what I'm talking about. Now, we're moving forward. Now, we're going to how to take advantage of the ministry of the Holy Spirit 
in your life, in my life, how are we going to take advantage of his ministration? It's so simple. Very, very simple. It's just for us to become conscious of who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. Just become conscious. Everything you do, talk. Let's just talk. Comment at the comment section. Tell me, how do you take advantage of the ministration of the Holy Spirit in your life? Just tell me at the comment section. Thank you. Now, the problem. We're talking about the problem now. What is the problem? Why is it that all these, you know, sweet things that of the Holy Spirit that Jesus as in the Holy Spirit that is with us now. He's our comforter, he's our advocate, he's our strengthener, he's our standby. He's all this to us. Let's just become conscious of who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. How to build ourselves? How are we going to how we build ourselves? You know, how to build our lives as Christian, how to build our lives as children of God. You build your life with your tongue. This is so small, but it's very important. It's very, very important. You know, I actually know this principle for a very long time, and I've been using it, and I've been seeing results in my life. Yes, I have so many, you know. I use my mouth to talk everything that I have right now, and to bring them to manifestation. Yes. Now, we need to believe. When you believe, it becomes established in the realm of the spirit. Do you understand? In the realm of the spirit, believing works. But in the realm that we are now, which is physical, the only thing that can bring what we believe in the realm of the spirit to manifestation right now is this our tongue we need to talk we need to talk what god says consign us boldly without you know fear without you know to start talking what god says consigning us consign us you know prepare a program as you know uh, a, um, a confession or something you know Prepare a proclamation or how like with the yes, as in a confession that you will say to yourself daily. You can say, I am a success. Yes, see it. You are. You are a success. If you say you are a success, you are a success. And it's established that you are a success. Yes, say it. Say it to yourself. Say it, I'm getting bigger. I can never be poor. I'm a success. Yes, say it to yourself. Say what you want to say. You see in your life. Say, I am going somewhere. Yes, say the word belongs to me. And yes, brother, yes, sister, the word belongs to you. If you see it, you see it in manifestation in the realm of, in this realm, in this physical realm that we are. Because when you believe, as I said earlier, when you believe is established in the spiritual realm. But for you to bring it to this physical realm, you need to say it. Believe and say it. Believe and say it. Now, we'll move further to what does it mean to be anointed? Yes, this is very important. What does it mean to be anointed? Now, we see so many people saying that, you know, anointing oil is everyone walking the street, not the oil. Yes, not the oil. I am the anointed. You are the anointed. The moment you become a new creature, you are the anointed. I am the anointed, not the anointing oil. No, you are not. You are Jesus' representative here on earth. If you walk the street, Jesus is walking the street. If you are laughing, Jesus is laughing. If you are talking, Jesus is talking. Therefore, you are the anointed. You are the anointed. The issue is what? Consciousness. Yes. Just become conscious of who you are. To portray this, you can study more, read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse, well, yes, 1 Corinthians 
chapter 6, verse 17. You will see what I'm talking about there. You will. When you talk, when you walk, Jesus is walking. God do all this through you, 247. You are a divine creation. Yes, because you are the anointed of the Holy Ghost. You are the anointed of the Holy Ghost. Yes, now we're going to move straight to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes, the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person, as I said earlier on, he's a person. He is not a thing. He can speak. He has a voice. Yes, he has a voice. To hear God's voice, you have to do it by faith. You have to do it by faith. His voice is still and small. Yes, he's still and small. Yeah, so you have to do it by faith. You know, some people tell you that, you know, God is a blah, thunder, blah, blah. But his voice is still and calm. Yes, his voice is still and small. He's still and small. He is that one. He is the one that calms you when you are angry. You know, when you are angry, but, 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 but you want to pull down the building, you want to do, but you hear that voice and say, woman of God, you're not supposed to go that way. That is so, but no, it was not there. But when everywhere became calm, the voice of God came. You understand? You can read that up from the, in the Bible. Yes, let me give you that scripture. First King chapter 19, verse 11. First King, first King. Chapter 19, verse 11. You'll read more of that there. Yes, the voice of the Holy Spirit is calm. The voice of the Holy Spirit is small. Yes, the voice of the Holy Spirit is still. So be calm. Be calm. You will get it. Now, we'll move further to about speaking in tongues. Now, many people tell you that I don't believe in speaking in tongues. I don't believe in speaking in tongues. All this blah, 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 blah they are doing, I don't believe. It's not spiritual. Sister, lovely is real. Because when you speak in tongues, you are helping yourself. You are actually helping yourself. Because the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Ghost says, when you speak in tongues, you do what? You edify yourself. Yes. You edify yourself. When you speak in tongue, the Holy Spirit, when you speak in tongue, it shows that, yes, you are not of this world you belong to. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's good to speak in tongues. It's good to speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are actually differentiating yourself from the world that we are today. Isn't that beautiful? I think it is. You can read that out in Matthew, chapter, in Mark, sorry, Mark 16, 17. You can see more about speaking in tongues. Yes. But one thing I have, I want you to know is that when you speak in tongues, you are associating yourself with God because people see you as different. You are not just like you know, no matter what, those are ah, and you, in fact, when you speak in tongues and you be misbehave, people will easily tell you that, ah, and he's always speaking in tongues, so and he's behaving like this. What are the benefits you get when you speak in tongues? One, you operate at a higher level of faith, yes, you operate at a higher level of faith, you alter, you all, you alter, you alter mysteries. As in, yes, when you speak on speaking tongue, you speak miseries. Nobody understands what you're saying. Nobody, even you yourself, you don't even understand what you're saying. But you're speaking miseries. Then you glorify God. Yes, when you speak in tongues, you glorify God. Hallelujah. And again, speaking in tongues is a language of the spirit. 
Yes, it's the language of the spirit. And you know, no limitation, no limitation in prayers. You can pray one hour. Video. If you find this video valuable, please come back next week because we post this kind of video, video weekly. So come back next week. Please subscribe. Please comment, share, and like this video. That's if you find if you find this video valuable, and then share it with people so that this message will go around for people to know who the Holy Spirit is. I love you guys.